Hello everyone, what's up? This is Rich, and in this video I'm going to show you the Apple Safari web browser. We can get to this browser by going to apple.com slash safari. I should know that I'm showing this on the, uh, the Windows version of this browser. Uh, if you're already using OS X, you already know what Safari is all about. This is uh, for the benefit of our Windows users out there. So anyway, when we're on this page, we click on the white button on the left side. It says download beta now. And there are three choices available to us. Uh, you only want to pay attention to the top two. One is Safari and QuickTime, and one is just Safari. I suggest picking the second one because if you have QuickTime already installed, you don't need to do it again. And in addition to that, if you choose the second download here, it is a smaller download because it's only one software and not two. And uh, if you uncheck this box right here, we don't have to put in our email address. We can just leave it blank and click Download Safari 3. If we do have this checked, then you have to put in your email address here and you'll get updated by Apple every so often for product updates and so on. But I don't want to give them my email address, so I don't bother. And then I click the button that says Download Safari 3. And then on the next page, uh, you'll get prompted to download the software. It's just a simple executable, and then you can run the file. After you have it installed, uh, let me just bring it up here. Here's what it looks like. This is uh, Safari 3. Let me just bring up the version number here. It's uh, version 3.0.3522.15.5. Uh, at this point, compared to the uh, last version of Safari, they finally have one that does the fonts right because beforehand, when you installed the previous beta, none of the fonts worked. But finally, they have one where all the fonts do work. So that's cool. They got rid. Of, uh, they fixed that problem. Speaking of fonts, the first thing that uh, people will notice is the font rendering is a, a lot different. It doesn't use Windows clear type. It uses its own font rendering engine. You will either love this or hate this. In order to change it, we go to Edit and then Preferences from the top, and then we click on the Appearance, and then there's Font Smoothing. We can either choose Light, Medium, or Strong. Uh, medium is the best one for the Safari browser on Windows because uh, it says best for flat panel. It's correct. In Safari, the medium setting is the best setting. If you go with light, eh, it doesn't look quite too good. If you go with strong, eh, it looks too fat. So you have light, medium, and strong. And if you're asking, can I turn this font smoothing off? The answer is no, you can't. You have to deal with what this browser gives you. That's Apple's way of doing things. So anyway, uh, there are some other options in here. This is mainly similar to Firefox. You're not going to find things that are too different in here. Uh, I'll quickly go through these. On the general tab, you can set your default web browser, default search engine, how to handle new window openings, and how to save downloaded files. This is a little complaint of mine here because in Firefox, what you can do is select specifically where each download goes if you choose to do so. This one is either desktop or just one other location and we can't choose any different locations per download so I'm pretty sure that when they release this out of beta this will change and I'm, I'm hoping so. And then uh, for links from applications I always choose to open them in tabs rather than windows so I have less windows, uh, excuse me, application windows on my desktop. So that's pretty cool. We have that option. And I already went through appearance, bookmarks. You either can include the bookmarks bar or not. If you have Bonjour, you have some additional options. I didn't choose to install that. You can choose how it handles tabs, um, like Firefox, control click, uh, opens a link in a new tab, which I do appreciate, and I like that. And uh, confirm when closing multiple pages. You also might want to go here because they have options for control click, control shift click click, control, alt, click, control, alt, shift, click. <laughs> so uh, and explains what each one of them does. Uh, the RSS uh, feeds, mm, uh, well, I'll show you that in a second here. Then there's the autofill options for saving usernames and passwords and things like that. And security settings, this is where you can enable or disable plugins, Java, JavaScript, blocking of pop-up windows, how it handles cookies, and uh, have a check mark for ask before sending a non-secure form to a secure website. I always recommend having it checked in that respect, because you should. And uh, for universal access, uh, this is actually pretty good because if you encounter a web page that has really small fonts, if the font size is below 9 point, it will display it in 9 point anyway. And that's pretty cool. I think that's good. You can also choose custom style sheets here if you want to. And that's that. Now, uh, first I'm going to show you uh, tabs in here. Now, when we do a tab, you can do Control-T, 
you see I have two tabs here. Uh, unfortunately, the interface in Safari is very dark. And for some, this may be very hard to read. We cannot adjust this font size at all. So it's all extremely dark. It does not conform to the Windows interface. It conforms to its own interface. So you may either love or hate that. And I can open up as many tabs as I want. You can see me open up a bunch of them. If I press uh, Control W, you'll see it closes them, just like Firefox. Load on a web page. It's all good. Now, if I uh, go back to PC Mac for a second and we'll look at the way it handles RSS feeds, we can just click this blue RSS on the right side and it will show the website in RSS view. This is only for uh, websites that have RSS feeds, obviously, such as blogs like PCMac.com is. And uh, we can bookmark this blog if I go bookmarks and then add bookmark or alternatively I can just grab the icon here and drag it down here and naming it clicking OK and then it's here and then I click it and then it shows it. Uh, unfortunately I don't see any uh, reader integration like Firefox does or Netscape for that matter like and I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about let me just delete this first and if I bring up Netscape for example, which uses the Firefox engine. If I go to a feed, I'm on PCMech.com for example, and we use the universal feed icon, it will actually ask me if I want to add it to Google Homepage or Google Reader. And that's pretty cool. I like it that it gives me that option, just doesn't show it. I think that's I think that's cool the way that it does that. And Safari should have that and it doesn't. So I mean, that's a little nitpick, I understand. And there's uh, two other things I'm just going to really quick nitpicks about this is that uh, everybody in Windows knows that you can resize Windows from eight points. Uh, you can do from top left, top, top right, right, bottom right, bottom, bottom left, left. Eight points. But in the Safari web browser, you only get one bottom right. That's it. You cannot resize from anywhere else. Fortunately, you can grab the title bar and move it this way, but you can't resize anywhere except on the bottom right. This is a staple of the OS X interface, and uh, in a Windows environment, I think this is backwards because they should make it just act like Windows and not act like OS X. That's just a personal view on my part, and I understand that, but if you're making an app for Windows, you should use advantage of the Windows interface. That's just my opinion on that one. And uh, the last thing I'll mention is just a little design aesthetic here. Uh, if we go to dotster.com, dotster is a domain registrar, and if I click on the My Account link, and whether you have an account here or not is irrelevant, I just want to show some to you here. This is an HTTPS, which means it's a secure website, and the only way you know you're on a secure website in the Safari browser is this tiny little insignificant lock icon insignificant but yet significant at the same time but they don't make it very obvious they should make this much more prevalent much more viewable so that you know you're on a secure website because people do online banking and things like that this needs to be seen better if we do this say in safari excuse me in uh, firefox or netscape and i go to dotster.com and i go to my account this changes to yellow and it shows a lock icon right here, and it's very obvious. Even if I do it with uh, Internet Explorer, because I already have it here from a previous session, you can see the lock icon here. And you can click it and actually get a security report, too. You can even view the certificates. And that's cool. You can do that. That's relevant information. If I do it with uh, here, I can click the lock icon and get security information here. If I try to do this with Safari and I click this, nothing happens. It's, it's probably a feature that hasn't been implemented yet, but nothing happens at all. That's got to change. If you use uh, a PC already and you're using Internet Explorer, Netscape Opera, Firefox, or what have you, and you try Safari, uh, are you going to switch? Probably not. It, this browser has a long way to go. It's very far behind the other browsers. But if you're using OS X already and you like Safari, I guess that's a good enough reason to use it on a Windows platform. Otherwise, I wouldn't use it. This is the personal opinion. I understand that, but that's how I feel about it. So uh, the, to the guys at the Safari team, come on, you got to step up to the plate, guys. Let's go. Anyway, that's it for uh, this little quickie review. If you have any comments, please feel free to leave one or two. Take it easy.